Welcome to Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to do an Arabian show halter. So it's not a native halter, it's just a show halter, and um, this would be for a horsemanship class uh, where you have a handler. So this dude's going to need some different clothes, but you got a handler, um, and then um, it's a really lightweight, almost almost not even there. It's just to prove how easy they are to handle. So here's a good uh, picture. It's a braided cord. Um, there's two uh, loops, jump rings, um, and then braided cord. And then you're going to have um, the buckle's going to be uh, thin. So I've got one buckle. <coughs> and then the lead, the lead's going to have a buckle. And that's a keeper, and then I have to figure out something for this down here because it's not a knot, it's a like a handle. So that's that's what we're gonna need to do. And then of course I'm gonna need some chain, and the chain is gonna have a jump ring on it or some type of ring. It looks like a jump ring for us. It's a jump ring. So we're gonna use gold. Here's my two buckles, there's my three jump rings, here's my uh, chain. Now I don't know what the um, I, I don't know what the gauge size is. When I buy these, it just says chain. Or if I buy a necklace, you know, at Walmart, and it's not even real anything, um, then that's, um, yeah, it just says chain. So I don't, I don't know what the gauge size is. Um, now this is a really tiny chain. I, I have no idea where I found it. Um, it's one millimeter. So it's one millimeter finished thickness. And that's really tiny. A lot of your curb chain is, is way bigger. All right, so what's our first step? Well, I would say we'll have to clean those buckles. But um, first thing I think I'm going to need to do is get a, um, I kind of want to get a measurement of the chain. So that seems to be the anchor between the pieces. And it's just going to be, uh, let's see if I can put her here without hurting her. Um, so I would say under the chin and then down. I'm going to say it's not going to be much more than that. It's not a lot. And I'm sure if I did millimeters into inches and then did hit it with a 1.9, um, I could find out exactly what it is. But I'm just going to go ahead and Oh, and I'm using the uh, jump ring um, that was on the chain, um, uh, just because it fits in there. I know it fits. Sometimes my jump rings are a little bit thicker wire. All right. Now, next thing is uh, I need, now we know that the buckle is up here at the top. So I'm going to overdo this. I'm going to go all the way on uh, far ear over to here so I have plenty of room. I can always get rid of the excess as I go. So that's one piece. And then the other side is going to be a little bit shorter. So I'll go ahead of the mouth to probably um, just behind the ear. That should give me plenty for creating and overlap and all of that. So there's those. And my jump ring. Now this is a um, braided cord. And the cool thing with braided cord is you can unbraid it. Sorry. I'm trying to get better about centering what I do. And um, so I'm going to split these evenly. I already took out the center cord. There's a center cord on this that uh, I think I've shown it in another video. But anyways, this one's already been cleaned in the center. Now you can braid your own if you know how to braid the small. I, I don't. All right. So that's nice. Nice if it was a little bit bigger, but so now looking at the picture, I'm gonna make sure. Let's 
see this one here is just a fold or this one here they kind of knot it a little bit so let's see what we can do if I can do that detail or not well either way would work okay so I guess I might want to do let's do a fold like that keep that free and then we're going to wrap this around Yeah. That kind of looks like the picture, right? Yeah, that looks like the picture. Really. Okay, now we need a nose band. And I want to see. On that, there's more chain than nose band, so. going to kind of measure it from um, just past her lip to just past her lip. <sighs> to break out the new one I bought. Put a new lid. glue than I like to get. Okay, so I check the fit on the model. And because um, I always cut a little long, I have a little extra here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to split these This gets pulled to the whatever the back is, so that would be that's the back. And of course, it spins, so sometimes I'll put glue on like a paper plate or something or a piece of plastic so I can clean it and reuse it. Um, And then use my needle on a stick as a spreader. So I know people just, you know, everybody does their glue differently. It's one of those where you, I just find when I put it, you know, squeeze it out, that it, um, I waste a lot more. I know there's a lot on my fingers which feel like waste, but. Right. Okay. Now I want to fit this to the model. Um, make sure the nose bend is right before I move on, because that's going to determine the lengths here. So we're going to take and put the right sides, I mean the wrong sides together, slip that chain in there, and make sure I don't have any crimps in that chain. 
or twists or anything. And then in and close it up. Alright. It's pretty good. Okay. Looks like that. And I know it goes up higher like that. So into the picture it's gonna go up here. Any further down, you will suffocate your horse. So it's got to go up here. And I think we have it just enough. When it goes up here, yeah, right like that. Okay. So I'm probably going to start my buckle attachment here. Yeah, way too much. But you know, start it. So I'm going to take a little bit off. As I way overdid that. Yeah, I don't make that many of these, so. Yeah, that's lovely. Now we're going to take this I've skived. I've skived this. And this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to precondition it first. A little glue. And then I'm gonna get that to fit flat. So now we're going to take this long end put that on and I'm going to go this is the one that feeds into the buckle so like always I'm going to cut myself more than I need Adjust it later. All right. Now. I'm going to secure this by putting another layer just right about to there. All right. That came out pretty good. Um, I'm the buckle is going to probably go right about here, um, behind the uh, right where the bridle path is. So I'm going to right here at the ear. Here at the ear is where I'm going to cut this. And same as the other one, I'm going to... This will help it to lay flat, code, so it's going from round to flat with this. Wow, that was a lot. And I'm going to um, I'm going to put the buckle on and then swing it back around. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip this. I think that's enough. We will check it. Okay, now that means I want my buckle right about here. That's about right. That's about right. Are 
they're so buckled, they're so tiny. Right. Almost got it right. So I'm going to glue it right back on top of itself. And that way we get it on both sides. Right there we go. And that. And then I want to very carefully do my house trim, roof, house, roof, is it roof, yeah, roof trim, looks like the roof of a house, all right, okay, this is really interesting, so the buckle attaches to the lead, okay, so we're going to do that first, and the lead, so 12 inches, Twelve inches of this cord. Okay, and the buckle is not very big. So it just really needs to just fold over on itself. It's in the description, it says brass, so I'm, I'm going to call it gold colored, but it would be technically brass, right? So, technically, with these type of, with these type of buckles, this is your keeper. All right, now, on the back, I do want to do the front. Okay. Pick a side, any side. <sighs> I'm going to go a little bit past that, and then there will be a keeper here, and then that would go into the thing, and then this comes back to here. So basically it's just a loop, right? So and then This does not get glued down. This chest. This would go into my tiny, tiny jump ring. All right, 
And then we need a keeper. And it's a sliding keeper. So over once. Oh, these are hard to make in 1 16th. Uh, it's over once. And then over like that. Here, we'll go ahead and get that trimmed. Right. Oh, at the very end here, they've got a, I don't know what that's made out of. I wish I had a, I don't think I could make that exactly that this small, but I've got to find something that's um, going to end this lead rope. So this is just some, um, it's chrome tanned, uh, I think it's, um, I don't know, it's really nice because it doesn't have the, uh, has very little grain on it, um, probably lambskin. I guess I shouldn't mention what animals, some people are really sensitive to that. I'm, I'm a carnivore. I'm sorry. I'm a carnivore. <sighs> Can't help it. Okay, and I think I want a right side on both sides. I don't want a suede side. So, just cut a strip. I don't know. Is that small enough? Is that in scale? Because why did I not skive? So, of course, I skived it to make it thinner. And what did it do? <sighs> Distorted. Oh, I love those distortions. Okay, but I do need now to fold that over. I'll fold that over. This is like take one. I don't know, can I do this in one take? Go ahead. Fold that over. And now I have a right side on both sides. So that's a lot more finished looking, right? I'm going to take um, that off. So, um, I think it's too long. So, take that off. Here we go. Because it's chrome tanned, it should stretch pretty good, and I should be able to get a pretty good sized hole. But I'm going to prep this. <sighs> Nothing like needing to use the tool twice, huh? Oh, where'd the lid go? I'd probably do the whole before I did the fold over. <coughs> but I 
appreciate that you're here. Um, like, subscribe, comment, uh, really helps the channel out. I am trying to get to monetization and I haven't yet. But I thank you all for spending time with me and um, you have yourself a really good day.